Hi, Sign with Zampente here. Today we're going to be talking about compressed oxygen cylinders and oxygen regulators. Oxygen cylinders, or oxygen tanks as they are sometimes referred to, are an easy and relatively safe way to store and transport compressed oxygen gas. Cylinders with medical oxygen are most frequently used as a means of portability for patients. When used with a regulator, they can provide supplemental oxygen when patients are away from their concentrators or other sources of O2. Cylinders are also frequently used as an emergency backup and on crash carts. The oxygen stored in cylinders is an enriched mix, typically over 90% purity and frequently higher. This higher concentration of oxygen increases the risk of combustion. Due to this, open flames of any kind should be kept a minimum of 25 feet from cylinders at all times, but especially when in use. Cylinder valve stems and regulators should also be kept clean of all dirt, dust, and oils, especially petroleum-based oils, as these can act as fuel for combustion. Here are some of the most common sizes of cylinders in use today. Each size is referred to by many names, but most commonly C tanks, D tanks, and E tanks. The oxygen stored in cylinders is under pressure, typically around 2000 PSI. This puts them at risk for an explosive decompression in the unlikely event that the valve is compromised or the tank is ruptured. For these reasons, proper storage is essential to minimize risk. Whenever possible, cylinders should be stored upright in a cylinder holder like this one. Cylinders should never be stored freestanding. This presents the opportunity for the cylinder to tip over. A falling cylinder can easily injure feet and other body parts and runs the risk of damaging the valve or tank walls. If a storage rack is impractical or not available, cylinders can be stored on their side, horizontal to the floor, like this. In either case, make sure the tanks are stored away from anything that emits heat, such as vents or radiators. Here we have a standard continuous flow regulator. Regulators are needed to extract the O2 from a cylinder and deliver it to a patient. Along the outside, you can see the pressure gauge, leader flow dial, oxygen supply port, and the regulator bolt. All medical oxygen cylinders use a standardized valve system for safety and ease of use. The valve system on both the regulator and the cylinder are designed so that they can only be attached one way. Here we have the regulator's valve set up on the left and the oxygen cylinder's valve on the right. This is a conserving regulator, often called a pulse dose regulator. It senses a patient's breath rate and delivers pulses or puffs of air on each inhalation. This conserves the contents of the cylinders, making each one last much longer. The valve setup is identical to and functions the same way as the continuous flow regulator. Oxygen cylinders are delivered with a seal in place along the valve stem. When ready to use, simply pull down on the tab to break and remove. Unscrew the regulator bolt until it stops turning or until the pointed end is flush with the metal. Slide the regulator onto the cylinder's valve stem and align the two male prongs on the regulator with the female openings on the cylinder, then gently slide into place. Firmly screw the regulator bolt down, making sure not to over tighten. Place the provided cylinder wrench onto the metal rectangular screw along the top of the tank and turn counterclockwise at least 180 degrees to open. The needle in the pressure gauge should immediately move to indicate how much oxygen remains in the cylinder. If a sharp hissing noise is heard, There is a break in the seal and gas is escaping, most likely from around the valve. Turn off the flow from the cylinder and check that the rubber and brass washer along the regulator's valve is present and in good condition. 
If the washer is askew or worn, replace it and reattach the regulator. Once the regulator is securely attached to the cylinder, turn the leader flow dial to the patient's prescribed LPM. Oxygen will begin to flow from the supply port. A nasal cannula or other device can be used to deliver oxygen to the patient. See our cannulas and other disposable supplies video for more information. To remove the regulator, first make sure that it is not currently under pressure by either exhausting the contents of the tank or by turning it off. Place the plastic wrench over the rectangular screw top and turn clockwise until snug. Turn the regulator's leader flow dial up to release any remaining air pressure. Wait for the pressure dial on the regulator to drop to zero, then unscrew the regulator bolt and slide it out and up to remove. How long a cylinder's contents will take to be depleted is dependent on many factors, chiefly the leader flow of the patient. Here is a handy chart that will help you to determine how long to expect a tank to last. This duration chart is included in your Nepenthe facility guidebook and should be on display wherever oxygen cylinders and supplies are stored. Two LPMs is the most common leader flow prescribed today. So on average, a full e-cylinder will last 5.7 hours on continuous flow and 17.2 hours with a conserving regulator. Many other factors including temperature, humidity, and patient breath rate will affect these times as well, so be sure to pay close attention to the regulator's contents gauge throughout the day. Compressed medical oxygen is produced under specific conditions and is expensive to transport and store. For these reasons, proper conservation techniques should be utilized to minimize waste. When not in use, turn off regulators. When a patient will not be using their oxygen from a cylinder for a short period of time, such as during a doctor's visit, turn the flow to zero on the regulator's leader flow dial. This is not a complete safeguard against loss, but will prevent the majority of it. When not in use for an extended period of time, turn off cylinders. When a cylinder will not be in use for an extended period of time, such as overnight or for those tanks used in crash carts, turn off the cylinder at the valve using the cylinder wrench. This will safeguard against 99.9% .9 of loss. Oxygen cylinders are convenient and relatively safe to operate. With the proper use techniques and care, they pose only minimal safety risk and provide a needed source of stored oxygen. Thank you for watching and have a great day!